well, it's been a little while since I've posted anything, so I decided I'd uh, show off a little bit of the progress over the last couple months. So all the motors that I've been making are pretty similar. Uh, you can see here that this is uh, 24 of these larger magnets with 24 of these smaller magnets on their side. Uh, of all the motors that I've been making, uh, this pattern has stayed the same. Uh, same with the winding pattern. Uh, it's a 12-pole, three-phase stator. Uh, so that those two elements haven't really changed. Uh, the diameter of things has changed over time um, and the number of turns and, and all that. Uh, so this is actually the one that turned the propeller. Um, you can see this is kind of crude. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not, the propeller was actually super glued on. I know that's kind of crazy that it stayed on. But um, this one uh, was was before I had a lot of knowledge with even 3D printing, so it's kind of um, it's kind of a bad model and bad build quality. Um, but you can see here, it's just like totally enclosed, thick plastic, um, but it held together. Um, and uh, it worked uh, but this one has four turns uh, of the wire uh, all the wire is pretty much the same on all of these there um, it's a litz wire that I've made myself uh, using the litz wire machine which you might see in one of my other videos um, this is a uh, 20 uh, 20 strands of 32 gauge wire um, and uh, this has four turns of that around this stator. Uh, that number has sort of gone up like one turn each version, it seems. Um, so yeah, I've used heat set inserts on the middle of the hub here. Uh, use that to mount the stator to something externally. Um, I put these in by hand, I think, in this version, and I was still getting used to tolerances, so these are not even in there that great. Uh, again, it's, I'm amazed that this held up. Um, but you can see it's pretty tight tolerance for the stator to the edge of the wall there um, But again, it worked. It doesn't drag or anything and it spins pretty freely uh, Now with this other side on it does drag and I think this is because the magnets have pulled in over time uh, And and you can kind of hear it dragging there uh, But it's it's just it doesn't work anymore not without so much friction that it heats up uh, so the next version is this one, which is just a little bit different. Uh, it has a little bit more breathing room. There's holes added to the outer ring. Uh, things are thinned out a little bit. The back plastic is thinner, which was not a good change because you can see, you might be able to see it on the video, but it's bending quite a bit um, from the from the magnets pulling in. There's no back iron on this or the previous one either. Um, but the the size is relatively the same. You can see uh, it, it's might, it might be a couple millimeters larger in diameter, um, but very similar. Uh, this also has the same magnet pattern, uh, 24 of the larger magnets, 24 of the smaller magnets oriented in the Hallbach pattern. Um, it's the same on both sides. This one, I don't remember really if it has four or five turns. This is similar to the last one and it's got a 3D printed core. Uh, and it has um, 12 legs on each phase, uh, which again is the same for all of these motors. This one I never put a load on, uh, so I never tested this with a propeller or anything because I think um, it was always dragging. The only time I could ever get this one to not drag, it was in this offset position, which just wasn't great. Um, otherwise, it, it, it's not great. Uh, so moving on to the next version. Uh, would be this guy. So again, 3D printed core um, with the with the turns wound around it. Um, this one is a lot looser around the hub. I'm not sure why my tolerances must have been slightly different, uh, or I don't know something with the print itself. Um, this one is epoxied into place. Uh, like the other ones, um, but I also kind of brushed epoxy across the whole stator to, I don't know, protect it a little bit. Um, this one has six turns, uh, so it's a little bit more, and the difference with this one is that I stopped twisting the Litz wire, so you can see that it's just straight across here. Um, and uh, this one actually works really well. This one does have back iron, 
So this is the first motor that I created that actually has any back iron. Um, you can kind of see here that there's a, a, a line. Um, this is where there's like an insert um, of the 3D printed part uh, over or between all the magnets uh, and that all covers the back iron. Uh, the back iron for this guy looks like this. It's just a, a thrust bearing washer that I ordered. Uh, I ordered a whole bunch of them thinking I was, was like, yeah, this is the perfect design. Yeah, it wasn't. Um, so now I got a whole bunch of these that I don't need. So the next one was one that I don't have a video of yet. This is uh, sort of the next step I had, which was eliminating the 3D printed core and uh, improving the back iron. Um, so there's a, there's a back iron on both of these. You can kind of see it sticking out here on the edges. Um, and that looks like this. This is a part that I had, I designed and I had custom uh, made by Send Cut Send. This is not an advertisement, but, uh, but I do like their service. Uh, it, was, it was convenient um, and cheap. And uh, once again, thought this was the greatest design ever. So I ordered a, a handful of these, but not too many. Um, and uh, I've, I only used it in this one. Um, so this one, same thing, same magnet pattern. You can see this has just the flat edge. It doesn't have all the holes that the other versions did. Um, that's to support this sort of impeller design that I tried. Uh, I don't know if it worked or not. Um, this stator is not great. Uh, the tolerances are pretty poor. Uh, it's epoxied into the hub, same as some of the others. Uh, but this one has seven turns. But it was like my first attempt at really making a stator with with a pressing uh, like mold, if you will. Uh, and these are fiberglass sheets over the top. Um, I'll go into more detail in another video on how I actually made those. Um, this is just kind of to recap the, the motors themselves. But um, yeah, same wire, seven turns with this one. It works. A little bit better. Um, I've actually been able to get this one down to like 185 kV, but again, tolerances are kind of poor. Um, and this one, I didn't want to waste it since I was gluing it in place. So uh, the way that this little spot here keeps it stood off of the magnets actually creates quite an uh, air gap between the stator and the magnets themselves. You can't really see it there, but um, it, it's enough to lower the kV, and I can't really do anything about it because I printed it and, and epoxied it so I'd have to I'd have to machine it down and I'm not comfortable doing that um, so that leads me to the next version um, and this one I haven't completed yet so it's still work in progress uh, but this one is quite a bit smaller than the last versions um, and it has hopefully been optimized um, from an experiment that I did to shrink the stator down as much as possible to, you know, reduce resistance and inertia and just bring this thing in as tight as I can. Um, what I've done here is also a custom part. There's no plastic backing on these ones, so it's just the metal on the back. Um, these are two different parts for the uh, back iron. Uh, the difference is on this one, it, it comes in, you can see there's mounting points for the uh, for the hub and so because of that I can change this hub out with different tolerances if I if I need to or want to or if something doesn't print right um, so hopefully it's a bit more of a modular design um, and I don't have an example with me but uh, the stator is designed to act the same way uh, it'll it'll screw and mount onto the the center hub uh, so that I can use different stators or change out the tolerances with the hub now, the difference with the back iron was quite significant, uh, so I kept going with it. Um, and again, use Send, Cut, Send for these parts, so they're pretty cheap. These ones I only ordered one of, uh, figured out my, my mistake. Um, and so uh, I, don't, I don't have the ability to make more of these yet, but if it works, I might order more. Uh, I'm, <laughs> funny enough, these might be the, the last iteration of the back iron, we'll see. Um, and so uh, the stator is the stator is going to be made using a jig that I've been working on and so this is 
using a bunch of 3D printed fins that just sort of plug into it. Uh, they're pretty small, but this is again with the optimized um, size based on the experiment that I did. Uh, so everything's shrunking quite a bit, but you just kind of weave the wire back and forth. Um, and then once it's all weaved, I do all the laps that I need. Um, I tie it all down on the inner and outer diameter and I end up with something like this. Uh, so this is, I use Kevlar to tie it down. Uh, it's just pretty strong. I can pull on it quite a bit without worrying about it breaking. Um, and then I can solder the ends here and squish it down and pot it in a press with the epoxy. Uh, this one is just a test one that I had done before that I never turned into anything. Um, but yeah, so I intend to use this to make some new stators, hopefully ones with more turns, uh, and I'm working on making a more uh, resilient mold, uh, starting to work with silicone to um, get it to not stick to the mold as much and, and play around with that and see if it, if it will work a little bit better uh, for reusing it. Um, but that's about all I have for right now. Uh, as soon as I put all of this stuff together and come up with a new stator, I will uh, definitely post a video about it. Um, but uh, yeah, if you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them uh, the best I can. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks everybody for your interest.